It's taken years of negotiation, of permits and permissions, of civil servant clearances to get the joint project off the ground. And now they are actually in the field. The Gobi is proving a reluctant and unwilling partner. They've been searching for 10 days and have found nothing of importance. For 150 million years, dinosaurs have been entombed here, and the Gobi is not giving up her dead without a struggle. It's a horse, guys. It's the only one. It's the right end of the horse, though. Congratulations. <laughs> Is that well, all you could find? Yeah, better days, huh? <laughs> what did you get? Well, I guess that's it, guys. They're gonna send us back now. wonderful thing about looking for dinosaurs is when you're just starting to lag, you feel that uh, you've looked for a long time, you haven't found anything important, or in many cases you haven't found anything at all, then suddenly you'll just find something that you know nobody's seen in 75 million years or more. And uh, it's such a charge at that point that it just makes all the hard work uh, that you've just gone through worthwhile. After 11 days of frustration and depression, they get a break. It's big, isn't it? Limbo. It's not a huge dinosaur. Huh? It's bigger than most of the dinosaurs we have in Canada. Where do you think the uh, proximal end is? How would you put the proximal end? Okay. Maybe there. Uh -huh. So that's uh, 815 millimeters, 81 and a half. Yeah. 81 and a half. It must be a big animal. Mm. Oh, what is that? Fibula? That must be a humongous rib. Rib. It's a rib. Not rib. Uh-huh. Very wide. Yes. Yeah. But very, very, very short. Yeah. This no, animal, no. I think, belongs to sauropod. Yeah. Oh, right back on his hand. Yeah. They think they found a sauropod, a giant four-legged plant eater. But how much of it has survived, they have no way of knowing. So maybe we should start to work right away. Look, that's the idea. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, this yeah. afternoon, we're hoping. Well, okay, yeah. Oh, Whatever it is, nice. so well it is locked inside the hard rock of a 200-foot high hillside. The Chinese have a solution. Yes, that would be very useful. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sauropods were the largest animals to walk the earth. And in China, it appears that they were even more fantastic than their North American cousins. It is possible that entire families of dinosaurs evolved differently in China than anywhere else. Possible because the geography of the earth has changed dramatically. Dinosaurs first appeared about 225 million years ago in what is called the Triassic period. At that time, the land of the planet was clumped together in one vast supercontinent. Dinosaurs soon occupied every corner of that world. But the supercontinent began to split up, and about 150 million years ago, the Jurassic period, China may have separated from the rest of the world. Dinosaurs there could have evolved in isolation, evolved differently from dinosaurs in the other continents. The sauropods, slow-moving giants with tiny brains who lived at that time, are a major clue to this evolutionary puzzle. The sauropod, if such as it is, um, is well underway now. We've started moving the overburden back, which is probably the single most difficult operation in the sense that it in, involves an awful lot of physical labor, but it really doesn't take that long in relation to the, the whole quarry operation. Um, in fact, it should be done within about another three days or so. Once that happens, then it's going to be a very long process to expose the skeleton as far as we can to find out exactly what the extent of the quarry is, after which we can start trenching around the outside and subdividing it into smaller jackets. 
hopefully, like most dinosaurs, it, it's curled up somewhat so that the tails come back over the back and, and the head's been thrown back, and therefore it's a, a little more compact package than uh, otherwise it's going to go way into the hillside and that's going to be a lot of pouring. The Canadians are afraid that the blasting, even in the hands of the expert Chinese, would destroy the fossil. But without explosives, the job would take many months, perhaps years. As more ribs and vertebrae are discovered, an acetone-based glue is brushed on to keep exposed bone from crumbling. Recognizable parts of the skeleton are beginning to emerge, but there are crucial pieces missing. Well, the big quarry represents a lot of work, and they always do. I would estimate that we're still at least five or six weeks away from completing that particular quarry. The sauropod that's in there is articulated. Uh, part of the body's been e eroded out, and it looks as if uh, part of the body may have been eaten as well by carnivorous dinosaurs. Um, so we're still not sure just how much of that specimen is, is there, but uh, certainly there's at least a third of a skeleton there now. At midday, with temperatures soaring to 50 degrees Celsius, the experienced Chinese call a three-hour break. Life is tedious. There are no toilets, no running water. There is no electricity. They live in tents and sleep, for the most part, on the sands of the Gobi. Yet there is little complaining. To be obsessed by the dragon is an all-encompassing obsession, an addiction. The hardships of the camp go almost unnoticed. As the sun moves into the late afternoon, they go back to work at Quarry One. Technician Linda Strong Watson, the only woman on the expedition, prepares a bone to be trucked back to Beijing. Okay. Um, Ping, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this plaster and then I'm going to get you to dip the bandages and hand them to me, okay? Okay. Once most of the rock has been removed, the bone is wrapped in a jacket of rice paper and then covered with burlap strips which have been soaked in plaster. At the end of an exhausting two weeks, it is up to Dale Russell to gauge the chances of freeing one of the rarest of fossils. I don't know. I just hope so much that there's sauropod skulls, because sauropod skulls are so rare and they're so important. I imagine there's something on the order of maybe two dozen sauropod skulls in the whole world. So if we got two of them, two more here, we're doing pretty well. After three weeks, they have moved 150 tons of rock, and it becomes increasingly clear that this time, like most times, the long shot is just not paying off. There are not enough bones in the rock to tell what kind of sauropod it really is. The time has come for a heartbreaking decision. Gilles Denis has worked 12 hours a day for 21 days on a quarry in the Gobi they are about to abandon. Quarry number one has now come to an end. We've, uh, it turns out that after we uh, uncovered all the bones, we realized that what we had here was a, a very small portion of a so 